just a lifetime. This moment is brought to you by National Cream Crackers. Taco Butte is powered by National Baking Company in association with Cranwatha, a Stanley and Empress production giving the youth a voice. Talk up you. So come to know these youths and show these youths. Talk up you tell the youths to know them roots. Nurture them, protect and love and hear these youths. Do you make them know I love you, show these youths. Mr. Save the youth, not kill the youth, I build with come for building. Talk up youth encourages all youth to find tangible solutions for their issues. Are you ready for today's show? Today's topic is the bill we come for building you youth in action Jamaica. We are building youths that have compute in Jamaica. Class, socioeconomics, it's something the youth in 2015 feel they need to address. They are still being judged by their address, skin color, and how much money is in their pocket. Listen up because our youths have some unique perspectives you won't want to miss. Talk of youth. We have to build the youths that have a youth in Jamaica. So Jamaica's level of inequality is so high that other governments all over the world use Jamaica as an example when they're talking about inequality. For example, Obama made a statement to the press warning them that the United States was slowly approaching Jamaica's level of inequality. Inequality is a serious issue and we need to give it the urgent attention that it deserves because it is not wise or safe to live in a country where there is an oasis of wealth surrounded by a desert of poverty. Classism is a real issue in Jamaica and the uptown and downtown divide cannot be hidden by the out of many one people facade. And you're right. At only the age of 16 years old, I went to change a check which I had received from the school, Monroe College, for outstanding leadership in the parish of St. Elizabeth. Many miles away from my community of Hendon Road in St. James, I went into the office and presented the check alongside my identifi the identification card. And the supervisor looked at the ID and said to me, you come from Norwood, Goldman Place, get out of my office. And that incident occurred at a time when I was the junior mayor for St. Elizabeth, the president of the National Secondary Students Council and head prefect of Monroe College. Now, can you imagine not only is ignorant bliss, but it's the greatest weakness of our people. My issue is a true she brown. A true she brown? Yeah. I know we don't really think about this side of the story, but this is a real issue. We complain about brown people getting better opportunities, but have, have you ever thought about the brown person who you only validate her his or her achievements by the color of their skin? This is a real issue I'd like to, to touch on. Jamaica is a very classy society, as Romario previously mentioned. We have the uptown versus the downtown. We have the rich versus the poor. Jamaica has one of the highest inequitable distribution of wealth. We have the richest persons in Jamaica owning over 90% of Jamaica's wealth and assets. In addition to this, poverty has serious negative implications on most of our people in society. Me, I'm from the Greenwich Farm and Waterhouse communities, and when I actually passed for Campion College, that's like the number one school within the Caribbean, I told my mom that that I would never tell anyone where I come from. And that's because of the stigma usually attached to those communities and attending a school like that with the wealthiest persons within the Caribbean and within Jamaica. Because I felt, in a sense, that telling people where I'm from would probably make them judge me. Because when people do look at you and when they do hear where you're from, they usually associate a negative stigma with a certain community. In addition to this, persons usually have low self-esteem because the brown persons or the high-colored persons are usually deemed to be superior to the black persons and the persons with a certain texture of hair. So as a result of this, many persons within the, within the society with low self-esteem usually resort to the bleaching, the skin bleaching of their skin. Classism in Jamaica is so serious that it goes straight down to our schools. You'll have schools in the residential areas where the middle and the upper class live, as to compare to where in the inner cities. The traditional high schools are mostly located in these residential zones and they're packed with resources as to compare to the schools in the inner cities where junior high schools are and where comprehensive high schools are now high schools. They don't get as much resources. We're looking at the, it going into the corporate, uh, corporate world. I was just, I'm just coming from working for the summer and where I was, I was told I couldn't grow my hair a certain length. I couldn't cane on my hair, but the rules governing the dress and deportment said your hair must be neatly groomed. While there, I noticed a couple of other persons from different ethnicities had their hair growing very long. 
and these are like Indians and Chinese and so forth. And I had a problem with that. How can you have a rule to govern everyone in this organization, however you make elasticisms for specific ethnicities? That makes no sense. If it is a rule, then it should be followed by every single member of that organization. Whether or not you're Indian, Chinese, black, it doesn't really matter. It's just one set rule to govern everyone. All right, so let's break it down, right? Wrong address, wrong car, wrong look, wrong skin color. So most people think that Itana Stan was in my wrong address. Just start about you know somebody shogging from the inner city trying to come up. But we seem to forget and negate the side that if you have a Kingston 6, Kingston 8 address, people gonna look at you and treat you a different way too. If you're brown, if you drive a nice car, you're gonna look at you and treat you a different way. You go downtown, you know. Have on set your clothes, you have a nice car, them, so you're gonna hike up the price. What is that about? Socioeconomic class and the barrier and the system don't us wear around one way. Is that right? Another issue I have is the correlation between crime and poverty. Recently, our security minister mentioned that there was no direct correlation between poverty and crime. And he used Haiti as an example by saying that Haiti is the poorest country in the Caribbean, but yet still their crime rate is not as high as Jamaica and other Caribbean countries. But I don't really believe that because based on my personal observation, I've realized that the most violent countries in the world are mostly third world developing Latin American, Caribbean, and African countries such as South Africa, Honduras, and Colombia. Wow, that was a deep issue. We'll discuss all of these after the break. This is Kevin too swayzy. This is Kevin too lazy. Take three. National Baking Company, quality Jamaican product. Yo! Cheesy boys, the pick me, I go love them here. It's like a more popular than hopscotch and video games. Now, this make with real cheese. They like cheddar beans. It's like somebody set up a cheese wire in your mouth. It's shocking me cheesy. Cheesy boys, energize your taste watch. National Baking Company, made for Jamaicans by Jamaicans. It's a wow scholarship. Cran Water, in association with Talk of You, donates three $100,000 scholarships to three deserving youth to enhance their educational and professional development. Cran Water, supporting youth with wow scholarships. Water with wow! No caring, no sharing, no unity. In my days, as a um, buggy cat, pan wheel was the only transportation. Things change. Nowadays, Shaka and Tata take over. High speed pan the road. In my days, men, women, boy and girl, used to greet each other with a warm, sweet how they do. Today they say, dog, put it here. And me fit tell you, see I'm blind, ear and deaf, or otherwise, take a bullet. Rubbish line the roadside, and nobody no care. This is madness. All right, so Jeffrey, you know, before we went on break, I heard you say something about zoning. While I don't agree with zoning, I don't think it's fair for you to say that you know these schools are located in residential communities. Because if you think about it, I went to Woolmers, I get quite used to the world, but we're located not in a residential community. Look at George, look at Casey. While they are equipped to resource, not by government funding. You have parents, PT organizations, old boys, everybody donating back to the school. So it's not fair to look at it and try to, you know, say, oh, government needs to try to do something to make sure resources go towards these schools. Because them send money to the schools. The schools have to try, you know, come up and try to do fundraising through what they want to do. But they have to look at the fundamentals. I myself is a KC old boy. And when I went to KC, I got this drive to ensure that the school remains on top and remains driven and so forth. So mm -hmm. I'm going to give back. I don't want to live in Maxfield forever. My job is to get out of Maxfield. Why is that a notion? Classism allows that. Classism teaches me that when you live in Maxfield, all you know is debt, drugs, 
gunshot are fired every day, every night. You do not want to stay there. So when you get to a school like KC, you network. You try to move out of that zone. But when you go to a school like Norman Manley, you're not so driven. Mm -hmm. You don't have those resources because the students who go to that school would more than likely live in that particular area and they will just become the norm. They will become, oh, nothing better, nothing now go on. The school up on shift, so when they get the study, when they get as much teaching time, we don't have enough resources, blah. They will not be equipped to say, okay, let us form a PTA. Let us do a barbecue. Let us have an old, uh, old boys and, and past students association mm -hmm. to build back this school. Classism don't allow it that way. You understand? So that is what I'm trying to say. I'm not saying the government should give, give, I'm not saying the government should come and give all the schools more and so forth. But you have to help these persons who don't have that drive to push for a better set, betterment for themselves. Inner cities have more schools than normal. They have more primary schools. They have more prep schools located in these zones. If you're going to do zoning, most of those children are going to come from, most of those children around Walmart would be coming from the, the primary schools and junior high schools around Walmart yeah. are not necessarily just Walmart prep or a vast prep. You understand? Because most of those children would not, their parents would not be able to send them to a vast prep. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So I'm looking at how many children are in the Walmart zone as into how many children would be at a Calabar zone. Mm -hmm. So, in that essence, the children from Red Hills would necessarily go there who might have a 30 or 40 percent average as to compare to me who live in Hannah Town would not be able to go to that school. Okay, you're going to tell me that this bus fare issue is not going to allow me to go to Calabar. I'm from the Greenwich Farm and Waterhouse communities. When I completed my GSAT, for example, based on this zoning issue, I would have probably attended the Haile Selassie High School. If the school is not developed or if we're not getting schools at the same level playing field and at the same standard, how exactly can we say or instruct students based on their performance that we're going to go to this school or that school? Because at the same time, many of these schools, based on the student that really do attend some of them, how many of them in terms of the quality that do graduate can actually form, say, an alumni association to do really give back? We need to find ways to actually offer more support to these schools, especially the ones within the inner city, to get them up to a certain standard. Not just the government, but the private sector could also assist as well. The diaspora could assist as well. Many of, we have many of them that make it through the Haile Selassie high schools and the Stats High School who do make it successfully outside of Jamaica, outside there in the world. Maybe they can also look back as well and give back to some of these schools. The social Teaches us, teaches us a process called interculturation, which is a process by which the cultures mix and the cultures blend. So you learn something by interacting with someone else. And I think, I kind of think zoning is the beginning of this, right? Because you go to the school, remember the zones, they're not going to send you because you live two streets down to the school, to the school. They're going to look at a wide range of our constituents and our community. And not because I come from this area, same socioeconomic class going to mean I act a certain way. Not because I live right here, don't mean that I'm going to be bougie. And because I live right here, I don't know nothing about class. See, I don't rate that. So I think the zoning is the beginning of this. You no longer have a school where you have someone that is smart. And a school where you come out, you don't get a job because people think that you see a fool. Or you don't have any sense. I disagree wholeheartedly. Because one, something that you could look at is if you're going to be placing on basis of your residential area, mm -hmm. I could have not made it to Monroe, mm -hmm. being from Henna Node. Mm -hmm. And then that belief that nothing good come from nothing good come from Node would mm -hmm. continue. Because as a young man growing up in an inner city community, I'm looking for upliftment and I'm looking for going forward. Well that's what I'm saying. The social economic class and the fact that we are striving to jump out into a residential community is what's making us think that the school is not good. Passing for this traditional high school actually serves as a motivation for a lot of students. That is what motivates them. They want to go to a campion. And the, that drive to get into campion is what motivates them and pushes them to excel academically. Yes, so Tristan, I definitely don't agree with you because coming from my community and other persons from the inner city communities striving to attend a campion or a case here in Immaculate, is what really motivates us. So in a sense, when if the schools within these inner city communities aren't developed, and when you're not exposed to certain things, are you saying that, okay, I come from these inner city communities, so I'm supposed to stay within these communities? No, Some of these no, no, schools no, no, no. don't even have, like, for example, computer labs within them. No, and they're not at a certain point based on your location for you to say, okay, because I'm from this community. And even the Campion College, for example, the persons who are uptown based on their address are the ones who will attend that school, no, what, for example. What I'm saying is that the mind frame that we have, like the mental slavery of socioeconomics is what makes us look at our school and say the school is not good. Because our school is our school. 
A school is a building. It's not where you're coming from, it's where you're going. You go there and you work hard. You have people at Woolmers, you know. I've got to Woolmers. The people at Woolmers that don't graduate with four, three CXCs. While well, you have people at a Clancarty, where people look upon and say, Wool Mary and Clancarty, we graduate with 10, 15 subjects. But look at the, their number then. When you look at a KC, which will have a 70 to an 80%, Pass, pass on a, along a ratio of each person getting five subjects, along to a Vauxhall, they will probably have a 30% ratio coming from a 20% ratio, so it's an increase. Going back to the point where it's an intercultural ratio, mm -hmm. if, you're, if I, I'm in a constituency where there's 30 to 40,000 persons in that constituency, mm -hmm. if, you remain, if you constantly do zoning with that constituency, then you will not network, you will just know the only the, only the 40,000 people within that space, you would not, I would not be stepping out of East Central, East Central St. Andrew to the constituency where Campion is to know anybody within that space. Mm -hmm. So my network will remain the same after a generation or if it reached that far. So you know anybody outside of that space. Yeah, that was, uh, I had another point. Um, you mentioned that there are students at Clan, Clan Carthy who are passing more subjects than students at some traditional high school. And I personally believe that in most situations, there's always an exception, but you can't, you, you can't really use the exceptions to generalize yeah. what normally is. Because students at traditional high schools outperform students at non-traditional high schools. Mm -hmm. Those few students who usually do well in the non-traditional high schools are exceptions. But what, you need, what, I, what I think should be do, done is a rotation of teaching staff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't make any sense that we say a school is just a school. And then when you send a student who is, has an 80% from GSAT into a school which is sending out students with 11 C6, and then it's sending, it's sending another student with a 40% average or a 50% average into a school with 30% passing rate. So what I think that we should do is experiment mm -hmm. and have teachers being rotated or find other means to have a different outline. True. I another point that. is... Um, when you look at our traditional high school, let's say Campion, like Cherry, most of her schoolmates or school batch, me batch members would not be in Jamaica. They would have left Jamaica by fifth form and move on because at the same time they're doing CXEs and CAPES, they're doing SATs and LSATs and all uh, these other international exams. Why is it not allowed in Norman Manley? Why is it not allowed in Haley Selassie? It is only allowed to a specific Group of students. No, 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 no. You have the freedom to do whatever exams you would like to do based on your resources. And at the same time, time management. Because mm -hmm. you imagine students at Campion, it's very difficult to manage and to balance doing the CSECs and the CAPES and also doing the SATs. So if students, you have students at Norman Manley and some of those schools who do have the time and do actually take, take, take up the opportunity to do true. the SATs. So it's really your freedom. It's not that it's not allowed. Jeff, let me ask you a quick question because you said something and it's it been, it been like sticking me. Yeah, it's been puzzling me for a little bit because you said, if I'm in a zone, I'm not going to get to network and go outside. Tell me something. You all know the people you go to school with? You don't know anybody else apart from people you go to school with? You don't know anybody else that don't live in a community? Most of my network began from KC. Mm -hmm. So the KC network is my first network, and from that network, I network outwards. But if you zone persons, they will remain in this space. It's as if only the six of us here, and we're constantly just the six of us on every episode of this show, then I would not know any of your friends, because I would only know the six persons here. So if we don't rotate the six of us, every episode, then I would not know a new person. Can I also add that many persons within even my community and other communities actually don't even know that an uptown really exists because they're only zoned or they're only socialized within their communities. Remember, you know, some of these inner city persons, their parents can't really afford to carry them to the uptown parties and the events at the, say, Pegasus. So most of the events that they do attend are within the communities. Mm -hmm. So when they actually get to go outside of their communities and actually get to socialize and interact at other schools, they get to learn more and they get to interact with other cultures as well. And you know, even to bring in, some people might say, you know, for example, she pretty for a black girl within certain communities or in certain spheres, right, Gillian? Yes, that is an issue. As I mentioned earlier, there is the other side of the story where a brown person is valid, her achievements, his or her achievements are validated by her skin color. It's as if, okay, you can work hard, you can not be rich but brown, and people still think that it's just because of your skin color, when really and truly, people who are brown put in as much work. 
As a matter of fact, you're, you're judged for being brown. They say, oh, you already have money, you already have opportunities, when that's not the case sometimes. In my situation, that's not the case. I'm from a middle class background. My parents work hard. I have siblings. They're bills to pay, light cut off sometimes. It's a real thing. But because I'm brown, it's as if, oh, you come from Norbrook, you come from Cherry Gardens. I lived in Portmore for eight years, and every single time I tell somebody I lived in Portmore, they're like, what? Portmore, no man, you live at Upper Carmel Way, what about, what about <laughs> Cherry Gardens, but that's not the case. Brown people have a, there are ills as well with being brown. So that's something I think we need to look at because when you are saying, okay, oh, it's because she's brown, why she, she makes certain achievements, how does that affect the person? When that person is thinking about goals and striving and trying to achieve certain things, and then they say, but even if I become Mr. Jamaica World, even if I become the Prime Minister, there's going to be this utterance of, a true Chevron. Yes, Julian, I must agree with you on that. Um, I have a friend who won Miss Jamaica Cornell, um, mm -hmm. Kimberly Webb, and I don't think some of the persons who were at the pageant itself saw the, the night. Mm -hmm. And the comments that I saw in an Observer article, mm -hmm. Akashi Brown makes you win. Always. But so they would make the black girl win. We know this, mm -hmm. why we, we watch this, you know. So I must agree with you on that. Speaking about stereotypes, I want to ask you guys a question because it's something I get all the time. I go out on the road, I'm doing something and I say, no man, that's too expensive. What was cheaper? And the person looked for me and say, yo, look for you. You can't afford it. What an uptown rich you look like. That's what I want to know. I guess it's based on how you speak some of the time and particularly because you might be lighter than that person. Maybe not all, but almost every brown person know it. When you go downtown or go on in half a tree and go to a vendor and you say, how much is this? And then pause. Them take a good while before yeah. that man say, because I'm trying to add it up. Yeah. All right, she look like, what kind of watch she have on? What kind of shoes she have on? That's I bridge it that, all right. And 200, 500, yeah, especially. how you speak. And I think, I don't think that's right. I mean, even if, okay, you think somebody is of a higher class, the, the price should be equal. There should be equality no matter what. Not because of my skin color. So I tell you, my friend, while I look at me, I'm just, and it's, it's so puzzling, and I found it funny at first. Mm -hmm. But now that we're talking about it, I really understand, because she looked at me and said, Tristan, you see me? I have the wrong skin color, I have the wrong hair, and I have the wrong car. And I swear because if you don't look at a certain way, they may expect your pocket to drop out with money. Because me, I, me, I love the culture and the vibe downtown. I really love it because everybody down there relaxed. You really see the essence of a Caribbean culture, music, dance, food. Everybody working hard, because Caribbean people work hard, full stop. When we can't go downtown, we can go downtown. People look at me and tell me, say, yo, just buy $100 for a banana, you know. <laughs> to, $150 for a bag juice, $30 for a bag juice. Worse, worse if you're, you're driving and not walking on the street yeah. like everybody else. You know the foundation of this issue, though, that we are a post-colonial society, where we're, we're basing our idea of beauty and the, the proper look on the European standard of beauty. Right? So this is why we have these issues of, oh, she brown and she's better because of this post-colonial, you know, it's, it's a stigma, it's attached to us, and I think we need to get out of it. And that's why we have the issue of bleaching as well. That is true. Muta Baruka has a code. Slavery is not a part of our history. It interrupted our history. And mm -hmm. if you look at it, let us look at skin bleaching. When you look at a person downtown doing skin bleaching, it is tabooed. It is tabooed by social, the, the, the wider society. But the upper class or the high society does it as well. What do they consider it to be? Toning, <laughs> skin peel, etc. But that is not your normal, natural look. You keep taking off layers of your skin just as that person downtown. And we, are, we don't consider it to be tabooed. We consider it to be, you much you're beautiful, even though she does six, seven, eight skin peels. Mm -hmm. We were having a conversation one day, and somebody said to me, girls put on makeup. So why can't I bleach? This is my way of making up. What do you think about that? That's a serious question. Whoa. But it is true. Why can't this person bleach if you, if you, the girl, add and contour to ensure that your cheekbones pop and your eye color is show, why is it that this person can't bleach to look the specific way that he or she wants? It's the same classism that creates this stigma of what is beauty. Mm -hmm. And so you follow this system to ensure that you look the part that classism shows you. I don't agree with that. I think the makeup is temporary, whereas the bleaching is permanent, permanent. and there's like a negative health, negative repercussions that can occur, that can affect your health. I mean, there are negative repercussions of makeup as well. There was a study that just came out the other day saying that lipstick 
can cause heart disease, all sorts of issues. But as you said, it's temporary. And for makeup, the, the ills or whatever can come of it are maybe on a long-term basis while why skin bleaching affects you right away. Right away, exactly. So I, I don't really consider bleaching as making anybody more attractive. Just be you. Stay in your beautiful black skin. Have you seen Gab Gabriel Union? <laughs> but the question is, why exactly are some of these people bleaching? Why exactly do we have this discrimination at the highest level? Some companies, they tend to prefer, or some people, they tend to prefer the brownings over the black purses, you know? You're beautiful or you look good for your black girl kind of comment. Why exactly because do we have that? It's exactly what Bob Marley said, you know? We have learned to emancipate ourselves from mental slavery. Because if you think about it, for the whole heap of years where our people were um, locked up and held captive in slavery, they were preached and pushed them, pushed them, pushed them, generation for generations, white supremacy. Mm. You blacks, you're an animal, I own you. You're a cat, you're nothing more than the goat, but I have right beside you, I sleep with you. So until we can stand up and realize that I'm black, I'm beautiful. Mm -hmm. I definitely, well, I definitely agree with that because many of the issues that we face today regarding our self-esteem, mm -hmm. our skin color, it's really because we're somewhat not connected to our history, yeah. where exactly we're coming from as black people. Being African, being Caribbean, we don't want to embrace Most that. Most people don't know that the slaves were brought over from Africa, where kings and queens and mm -hmm. empresses, everybody thinks they are some like a jungle bushman, them grow up and fling that boat and bring them over here. No. It's because we're not taught of the history before slavery. Mm -hmm. We're taught of the history that, oh, these people are living there and they, they, they did hunting and, and spears and arrows. But we're not taught that these people had a specific way of life. They love the skin. They love the civilization, the socioeconomics that they had. We're taught 400 years of slavery and we know every inch of this 400 years. We don't know anything prior to that 400 years. Yes, Jeffrey, while I agree that we need to educate our people on the past, I think we also need to move towards accepting that we have a modernized society with different skin tones, mixtures, Creole. We're not just black people anymore, we're a mix. So say a person who is born with two Chinese parents but lives in Jamaica, do you tell that person that he or she is black? What about the brown person? When people say, write your ethnicity down, you're like, other. Because there's nothing that describes you. You're a mongrel. You mix up. So we need to move. Yes, yes, we need to educate our people on the past. But we need to also create awareness and educate people on, yes, there are mixtures and we can accept everyone. Well, you know, Tristan, as you mentioned, emancipates ourselves from mental slavery. It was actually Marcus Mosiah Garvey who mentioned that first. And he also said that once you have any form of black or negro within your blood, we're actually all united as one, right? So why exactly do we have these racial issues if we're all black and we're all united? Why can't we just embrace each other? We feel the need to reflect the standards of European society. And as a result, we have developed this shade is a mentality where we separate ourselves based on the shade of our skin. So I think the real issue in Jamaica is shadism and not necessarily racism. That was a great point, but I really want to look at the correlation between crime and poverty. Is it that we only have crime in poverty-stricken areas, or is there crime in the higher society as well, the so-called rich society where the residential persons live? Or mm -hmm. Is it classified by different means or methods or names? Yes, I think what people would consider to be an uptown crime is what is universally known as a white-collar white crime. Color, yeah. Even though not all uptown people are only engaged in white-collar crimes because they're I mean, there must be an exception where there are uptown people who are engaged in what would be considered blue-collar crimes. So crime is not necessarily penetrated in just inner-city communities. I think crime is a phenomenon that affects people from all walks of life. But I think also the level of crime, is it that in the uptown society then with the white-collar crime, are they using guns? Are they using, you know what I mean? Or are we using, on the blue-collar crime, there is more use of guns and ammunition. Is that the case? Well, you see... But what we learn is, we learn sociology that the uptown people are what we, what we might call the intelligentsia of society. Mm -hmm. Those are the brain working people, people that set the policies. These are the politicians, the doctors, the lawyers, people who set the policies. They're setting their own interests. So this crime that we might experience um, in different societies and cultures, we see that it's widely underreported. The largest white color crime we saw, or corporate crime we saw on TV, was Finsack. Mm -hmm. And that's because, who was this brother? Nobody ever knew who he was. And the thing about that is that those crimes that are committed by, by people who would be considered the intelligence of society or the rich people in society usually have far-reaching consequences compared to crimes that are committed by people from low socioeconomic backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Something to look at. Um, a rich man can always pay off 
a policeman. <laughs> well, a poor man, on the other hand, have to go in a prison because he have a spliff. Get beaten in prison today. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's something that we can look at. With all this said, what are our social media things that add to the conversation? National Cream Crackers. It's a wow scholarship! Cran Water, in association with Talk of You, donates three $100,000 scholarships to three deserving youth to enhance their educational and professional development. Cran Water, supporting youth with wow scholarships. Water with wow! The fact of the matter is, Jamaica is a melting pot of cultures and people. So we need to understand that, yes, even though we are black, black comes in different forms, and there are other nationalities that, are, that have been mixed here. So we need to create more awareness. We need to intermix with people and understand that we are one people regardless. We are all humans at the end of the day, and we shouldn't discriminate on people or judge them because they are brown or black. A shared commonality of human beings is that we are different. Sure you can see it from the panel here. It is important that we learn to respect in all aspects, irrespective of race, location, school education, anything. Respect in all aspects. With all that said and done, we have to just look at rules and regulations and, enforce, and ensure that when rules are enforced or when rules are implemented, they are enforced to the strictest of its measures mm -hmm. along every line in matters, not your ethnicity, your class, where you're from, but strictly on the line where the rule is made. Also, another solution to the education system, I do not believe in zoning. I personally believe it should not be used or implemented. I believe we should enhance the, the, the schools that we have and allow intermixing from an early age to allow persons to know that classism should be removed. And to add to that, Jeffrey, Grade 6 achievement tests for placement of GSAT students. In any organization or in anything that you have placement, you're going to have segregation. So what I consider should be done is, as a possible solution is for the Ministry of Education to have grade 6 diagnostic tests to test where students are at the grade 6 level after doing this examination and then place at random to different institutions. Then you'd have a mixing and then we could see what the results are. Well, prejudice and discrimination, I believe, should be tackled as early as at the basic school level. We need to have the teachers promoting or encouraging students to accept and to love each other, regardless of their skin color, regardless of where they live. And um, in addition to this, we need to revisit the learning strategies that we have within our schools. We need to start including the philosophies of Marcus Mosiah Garvey within our schools to promote self-reliance, equality, unity, self-love. We also need to celebrate the life and work of many of our ancestors and we need to revisit our history because understanding where we're coming from as a people will also give us a better appreciation of understanding and embracing ourselves and knowing where exactly we're going as a people in the future. My solution to this whole socioeconomic problem is a call out to every individual watching, anybody that is hearing, right? And it's to look into yourself and realize your own self-importance and the greatness in you and stop looking at people and judging them for how they look. That's a good point, Tristan. And I want to add to that to say that the, my solution to classism would be for us as a nation to annihilate the stereotypes that we attach to each other because I believe those stereotypes are what fuel this resentment and divide that is currently prevalent in society. And I also believe that the government can also play a more active role in getting rid of social inequality by investing in the education and the health of the poorest and the most vulnerable members of society. 
And I also believe in order to tackle our crime problem, we need to help those who are at risk of being perpetrators of crime. Those were some excellent solutions, you know, offered right here on Talk of Youth by the Youth on this panel. So you know what, you should not just watch and listen to them, you need to start executing them as actions, you know, going forward. So you know what, now it's time for the celebrity interview. Have you ever been to Jamaica before? Did you like it? Yeah, I've been to Jamaica twice before. We can't, that's how good I've been. I've been to Ultra Rio, which is really enjoyable. It's really pretty, and I like the uh, stars. This is a show from us to us, the youth. What would you like us to learn in the future? Oh, I would love for them to know that there are a lot of people uh, all around the world that want to see them grow and into you know, rising adults and there are a lot of people such as myself around the world that really care about them and to never be afraid to ask questions, never be afraid to to assert themselves with uh, whatever path they take and to, to love each other, you know, be kind to one another. What are the keys to your success? I love um, being in show business. I've been in show business um, since I was 11, or well, most of my life. And, you know, it's just rewarding to me to be able to wake up every day loving what I do. Um, so when you love what you do, you enjoy it, you know. So I think that's on whatever path that young people want to take, that it should be nurtured. And even if, you know, you don't have help, you know, there's always somebody that will be willing to, you know, be willing to help you or be willing to guide you the right way. You just got to keep your mind and eyes open for it. But uh, I love, you know, being a show business. It allows me to express myself. It allows me the creativity to to share with the world and, you know, all of my gifts. And, you know, and, you know have fun doing it. How important is it to talk up, a.k.a. let your voice be heard? Extremely important to talk up and, and let your voice be heard. I think our young people today, or I think you young people today, it's not that easy. It's not easy. I mean, it wasn't that easy when I was growing up, but you have a different set of issues that you're dealing with as youth. And, you know, it's, you've got to, you got to be able to, to be responsible, but yet, you know, be your age, you know, don't, don't grow too fast, don't move too fast, you have a whole life ahead of you, so savor those wonderful moments that, um, you know, and create good memories for yourself. Jamaica is a very classy society, what would you recommend to this man to this mentality? You have to have self-confidence, number one, so that someone else's words won't harm you, you accept you and how you feel about yourself. Um, unfortunately, I mean, even here in the United States, they're separating our children by education. Uh, so pretty soon, you know, a lot of our children won't be able to afford to get a good education, even a decent education. So uh, education is very important. But, you know, I always tell young people, read, read. Take, you know, even with the Internet, you know, take the time and do a search on your own. Find out things for yourself. But the, this, this color thing, you know, there's always been a light-skinned, dark-skinned thing that we as black people have amongst ourselves. And we, have, you know, we've come a long way from that, but we have a long way to go still. And, you know, we have to be very careful about how we treat each other when it comes to our color. Uh, but I think if young people can focus on being confident and surrounding themselves by positive people that nothing can stop them. You just got to think positive and don't put out negativity because all you get back is negativity. Thank you for having me. Talk up you. Talk up you. Let's have to talk up you.
Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Talk Up Youth, giving the youth a voice. Keep the conversations alive and help us to continue to find solutions for all our problems. Twitter and Facebook is at Talk Up Youth, hashtag T-A-L-K-U-P-Y-O-U-T, and on Facebook, Talk Up Youth TV show. See you then. Talk Up Youth is powered by National Baking Company in association with Cranwatha, a Stanley and Empress production, giving the youth a voice.